All right, everybody. Once again, we're so glad that you are here, and we want to remind you as we as we come out of the prayer time and the worship time that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it. And as we move into the sermon, I just want to take a, a moment to give God thanks for all the people who have a gift of a relationship with Jesus and then express that through music. I'm so thankful for Haliani and for Jordan and for our choir and musicians and for our band. They do a fantastic job. And so wherever you are, uh, would you just give God a, a word of thanks and praise? Uh, maybe say a hallelujah uh, or, or just thank you, Lord, for the music. Music means so much. And it ushers us in to the throne room of grace. Uh, worship is not just a, about gathering together physically. It's gathering within the presence of the Lord. And music helps us do that. It helps us come to the end of ourselves. That's why we have prayer and confession. It helps us understand a greater world of brokenness. And so when we gather here, music does a great, great service to us. And it gives glory to God to make sure that we, we have things in proper perspective. So we're so thankful for the music ministry of this church, especially during this time when we've had to be working uh, to worship remotely. And so we're so thankful for everyone who's been exercising their gifts in that way. So as we move into the sermon, I have one question to, to ask you. Who is it that you know of that's full of it? I'm just going to let that linger for a little bit. But who is the one person that you know of who's full of it? What we're finding during this time of isolation where there's, there's setbacks and there's fear and there's frustration and there's anxiety... Sometimes it's, it becomes really, really clear about the people around us who are full of it. And some of us are thinking, yeah, I know people who are really full of it because you've heard them talk or you've seen their posts or you realize that they, are, they said they would always be there for you, but during this time they have not been there. So you may tend to be thinking negatively about it, but I want you to think about it positively. Who are the people that you know of that are full of it? Who, who during this time of anxiety and fear and frustration and setbacks have revealed that there's something else about themselves that isn't on the negative but is, is very positive, that, that makes you want to gravitate toward them more, that, that wants whatever they have to rub off on you a little bit. We, we don't need any of the negative it folks who are full of it. We don't need any more of them rubbing off on us. But who are those people that are full of it that that whatever that it is, we want more of it. We want to be surrounded by them. We're going to be talking about what that it is during the message today. And let me tell you what I'm going to be praying for you about as we go into the message. I'm going to be really clear with you to let you know what my expectations are when I pray. My prayer that I'm about to pray for you is that you would be so overwhelmed and that you would be so overcome with, come with the peace and the presence and the relationship with Jesus Christ that you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt what it means to be full of it, that, that it factor. That's going to be my prayer for you, that during this time of sermon, that, that you're not just impressed with the technology behind the screen, and you're not just impressed with the, with the sermon or, or depressed by the sermon, but that you will be impressed by what God is doing in and through you. Uh, we want you to be known as someone who's full of it. So I want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today, this moment right here, where whenever people are worshiping with us, Lord, I thank you for this moment because you made it. You've enabled it to happen. You've brought the people to this spot right here, right now. And God, we pray that, that you would overcome them and that you would overwhelm them and that, that they would feel, wherever they are, the assurance of your presence with them right now. That your presence would be their peace. And that you would fill them with your love and with your grace to such a degree it amazes them. And it amazes everyone around them. Lord, we expect you and we trust you. And we love you. More of you, Lord, in every way. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. So there's one word I want you to keep in mind this morning as we, as we go along into the message. And, and that word is encourage. You'll see it up here on the screen. Encourage. 
And encourage simply means this, is to, to give support and confidence or hope to someone. So when I'm talking about, do you know someone who's full of it? Once again, I'm not talking about the negative stuff. Those people are really easy to, to point out, okay? They're the ones who tend to complain. They're the ones who tend to, to tear people down. They're the ones who, say, who seem to find the one gray cloud in a clear blue sky. We're not talking about them right now. They, we, we almost spend too much attention on them. But if you find yourself in that description that I just described, I want to let you know that this message is for you also. That that does not have to define you. That Christ is, is who defines you and what it means for that. So let me, once again, encourage is to give support, confidence, or hope to someone. And, and, and as we talk about encouragement or being an encourager, I want us to focus on one person in particular. His name is Barnabas. Barnabas is one of the heroes of the Christian faith. Some of us may have heard of him. Most of us have not. But Barnabas is known as a son of encouragement. He was really full of it. And because he was so full of it, he's been remembered for thousands of years. What an impact he has made. So as we, as we focus on what it means to encourage and to be full of it, and by looking at Barnabas, I really want to encourage you to maybe write down a few things. I think it's going to, it's going to make a difference in you as well as others. And here's the first thing that I want you to, to maybe remember or write down, however you do that. And it's this. We'll have it up on the screen. A transformed heart changes how you see the world, your outward actions, and how far people are willing to trust you. So a transformed heart changes how you see the world, your outward actions, and how far people are willing to trust you. Okay, it's not based on your birth order. It's not based on your quirky personality. It's not based on all those natural things that sometimes limit us. It's based on a transformed heart. Let's not run past that. Let me give you an example. In the book of Acts, which is a story of, of how the Holy Spirit births the church, and the church is not brick and mortar. I think we've come to understand that over the last eight weeks or so. The church is the body of Christ, and the body of Christ connects in different ways. And during this season, it's, it's only by remote access. But God still gets the glory. He's still the head of it. So here's what's happening in Acts chapter 11. In a town called Antioch, just the Holy Spirit's just broken out. And broken out in a positive way, not like a virus, but in a positive way. That, that people are coming to faith in Jesus. People's lives are being transformed. And the news of that miracle happening is reverberating in different towns. And so what happens is that news of this, this Holy Spirit breakout in a town called Antioch, the news of this reached the church in Jerusalem. Once again, the church is not the brick and mortar. There weren't brick and mortar churches on every street. They weren't across the street from one another. These are a group of people who are gathering in people's homes, who are gathering in other places in the marketplace. And news of what was happening in a town far away reached their town, their location. And when it reached Jerusalem, what this t group of Christians did in this town was they sent a guy named Barnabas. They sent Barnabas to Antioch to check things out. And he was, get this, a good man full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of it, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And get this, a great number of people were brought to the Lord. So uh, we don't really have a context for Jerusalem and Antioch. So uh, think about it this way. In our geographical context, and we know that there are people all over that aren't in Granbury that are worshiping with us, but about 15, 20 minutes away from where we are is a town called Godly. It's a pretty appropriate name. But imagine this, the Holy Spirit breaks out in Godly, and it reverberates through the people. And because the people in this area, Acton and Granbury, mix and mingle to a degree— during this season, with the people from Godly, word gets to, to us that God's doing something new in that town, that, that there's a fresh wind and there's a fresh fire, and, and people are coming to faith in Jesus, and, and, and people are, are longing for repentance, and, and relationships are being healed. Generational sin in family is being eradicated, 
And we catch wind of that and we go, whoa, 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 we need to check that out. And we need to send someone that, that we trust who can give an honest and faithful assessment of what's happening. So the people that we would look toward to be that person to go toward godly, to really assess what's going on and to come back and give us a faith-filled report is someone who is full of the Holy Spirit. It's someone who is, is an encourager. It's someone who, who looks at the world and doesn't just see it as it is, but looks at the world and sees how it can be and how the Lord is moving. That's why the church in Jerusalem picked Barnabas. Barnabas was someone whose heart had been transformed. And because his heart had been transformed, It changed how he saw the world. It changed his outward actions. And it also changed how far people were willing to trust him. People gravitate towards people whose hearts are transformed. It wasn't just that he had a natural inclination to be an encourager. That will only go so far. But his life was transformed. It changed how he saw the world. It changed his outward actions. And it changed how far people were willing to trust him. Don't you want to be full of it? I do. I want to be more and more full of it. I want, I want the Lord to continue to transform my heart. Because there's some days where it seems like it, my heart may grow a little cold. Because I take my eyes off of him. And, and I start running on fumes. Anyone ever done that in your faith? Uh, you know, I look back and it's been a few days since I've done a devotional. It, it's been a few days since I prayed really in earnest. I may go through the, the motions, but in earnest I may not have done it. And as, I, as it, though that span gets longer and longer, my tank gets emptier and emptier. But when I get replenished with the Holy Spirit because I leak, and when I get replenished with the Holy Spirit, it changes how I see the world. It changes my outward actions. And I really do think it changes how far people are willing to trust me because they sense that I'm not just talking the talk, hopefully, but that I'm walking the walk. Same thing with you, isn't it? Think about those people in your life who are full of it. And then also think about yourself. Would people around you define you as someone who is full of it? The Holy Spirit, not that other junk. What we also learned from Barnabas is this, is that a spirit-filled encourager, and now I'm making the distinction now, not just an encourager, but a spirit-filled encourager celebrates what God is doing. A spirit-filled encourager. Remember, What defined Barnabas was that he was full of the Holy Spirit and faith. So a spirit-filled encourager celebrates what God is doing. So Barnabas goes to, from Jerusalem to Antioch. If we sent Barnabas from Acton Granbury to Godly, remember, just put this in perspective. And when he arrived, and because his, his view had changed what he sees, and when he saw what God had been doing, he was glad he was glad at what he, had, what he was seeing, and he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all of their hearts. I want you to think about those people that, that are so full of it that, that when other people are succeeding or when they've had some type of success or celebration, they, they celebrate with them. But do you know those people who can't stand it when other people are succeeding or who can't stand it when they're celebrating? Barnabas was full of the Holy Spirit and he knew himself enough and he knew who he belonged to enough because his heart was continually being transformed and it changed how he saw the world, it changed his outward actions, and it changed how far people were willing to trust him. But that ongoing transformation was taking place that when he left, for example, here and went to Godly and he saw everything that was going on, he wasn't jealous He wasn't kicking the dirt going, man, I wish that would just happen where we were. What he did was he celebrated with them. And through that celebration, he encouraged them. And he came alongside them and said, man, keep on being faithful. This is a great God thing that's going on. Obviously, it's not because of how great your personalities are or how long you've been in churches. But this is because of the Holy Spirit breaking out. Let's give credit where credit is due. That's what a Holy Spirit-filled encourager does. They celebrate what God is doing. Now, who are the people around you who are full of it? Who are the people around you that they are always on the lookout 
for what God is doing and because they want to celebrate. When something good happens at another church or they see something good that, that happens online, they're the first ones to say, praise God. They give credit where credit is due. Don't you, don't you want to be more like that person? Don't you, want to, don't you want to gravitate more towards people like that? And then think about the people who are not full of it, but are full of it, the negative thing. That, that if there's a celebration taking place, if people are getting baptized, if families are being reconciled, the first thing that they do is they think about, well, it was going to happen anyway. That's not who we are, y'all. We, we are spirit-filled people. And even though we may not have that natural inclination to be an encourager, being filled with the Holy Spirit changes how we see the world and what we celebrate. A few years ago, I, I knew a lady in a church I pastored who, uh, she was a single mom. I don't know the whole story, uh, but she, either because of her upbringing or because she had just been worn down in her previous married relationships, she wasn't married any longer. It could have been a combination of factors of family upbringing, marital situation, also some depression. Uh, she was a teacher, but she never offered a word of encouragement to anyone. Not her son, not to other people, not to the students that she taught, by her own admission. Because her worldview was such is that why would you incur encourage people? People should just be doing what they should be doing anyway. Why celebrate what should be already being done? I get that. Some of you understand what I'm saying because you resonate with that. But you're missing out. You're missing out. We believe in a God of abundance. And abundance begets, that's an old biblical word, abundance begets abundance. And so as we are filled with the abundance, with the generosity, with the encouragement of the Lord, then it spills over and we are meant to do that with other people. And, and we, we celebrate what God is doing. And I pray for your release. That if you find yourself in that situation where you're like, I'm not going to encourage anybody. People should just do what they're supposed to do anyway. I pray for a Holy Spirit release of you. That, that you would be released from that burden, that that chain would be broken. And that you would rise to the service of having your, your vision transformed so that you can see everything that God is doing around you and give credit where credit is due and be filled with it. Begin to be known as someone who's full of it instead of someone who's full of it. We also understand through Barnabas that a spirit-filled encourager takes risks and stands with people in crisis. A, a, a spirit-filled encourager takes risks to stand with those who are in crisis. You know anyone in crisis right now? I mean, as, as, we, as we try to assess what's going on with the church and, and when we might reopen and in what degree we would do that, we're, we're taking a lot of things into consideration. And one of the things that we're taking into consideration are those who have been designated to be at risk, which every piece of evidence shows those who are 65 and older especially those who are 65 and older who are, who are dealing with, with different health ailments, okay? A spirit-filled encourager takes risks as they are willing to stand with people in crisis. And standing with people in crisis is not always about giving everyone what it is that they want. Like, let's all get together as soon as possible. Staying with someone in risk is sometimes standing beside them and just having the ministry of presence, and just acknowledging the grief that, yeah, for right now, this really stinks. But God is still up to something. For example, there, there was a guy named Saul. He had been converted uh, by the Lord Jesus on a, on a road to Damascus. This is over in the Middle East. Okay, before he was converted, he was one who was persecuting Christians. Like hardcore persecuting them. Like, like putting them in jail for their faith. But then he met Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. And he got so fired up with this Jesus who had transformed him that he immediately started trying to talk to the people that just a few days before he was trying to capture. So what do you think their response was? Uh, yeah, you need to stay away from me. I don't trust you. Remember, a transformed heart impacts how we see the world, our outward actions, and how far people are willing to trust us. Saul had not built up 
any trust yet. People were still leery. They believed in the miracles of Jesus, but was just a was this just a scheme to get more Christians in line? Okay? So here's what happened. When Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but here's what happened. They were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. You ever had any doubts that people really came to faith in Christ? I know some of us have. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. I I want you to get this. A a spirit-filled encourager takes risks to stand with someone in crisis. Saul was in crisis. And Barnabas did something that's really super risk-taking. He stood alongside the one that no one else trusted. And because people trusted Barnabas, he advocated for Saul. He stood up for Saul when Saul did not have a voice. He advocated for him, and that was a risk. But when he took that risk and stood beside Saul, not only figuratively, but literally, and said, hey guys and ladies, I hear you're scared. I understand you're understanding this is a huge crisis that you are a part of, but let me attest to you what the Lord is doing through this guy. And because people trusted Barnabas, they began to trust Saul. A spirit-filled encourager is willing to take risks to stand next to someone in crisis, okay? Because they're full of it. Who are the people in your life who are full of crisis right now? Not just the vulnerable, the 65 and older, who may have some significant health issues that are going to run smack dab into the middle of the coronavirus, maybe. We're trying to, uh, trying to assess that. But who are the ones that are most vulnerable, who are in crisis, that if you don't stand up for them because you are full of it, they're going to suffer? Who are the people that you know of in your family, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, That because you are full of it, because you are a Christian, because you placed your faith in Jesus Christ, because you've walked in the ways of faith for many, many years, you, you, you haven't just been a church member, right? But you have been partnering up with what God has been doing because you are a spirit filled encourager. You're going to intentionally come alongside someone, take the risk and specifically come alongside someone in crisis and stand up for them. Who is that person? And if you're looking at yourself going, man, I can't can't do that. I I don't feel comfortable doing. I'm going to pray for your release. That you would be filled to overflowing with the presence of Jesus. That you wouldn't first think, well, someone else is going to do it. No, maybe you are the one to do it. Maybe it's not someone else's job. Maybe you have that burden. Maybe God's saying something to you or prodding you right now as I'm speaking to you. And you know exactly who it is that you need to be, be coming alongside. I don't. And the person next to you may not. But you do. You know who that person is. I'm going to pray that you would be released from your fear and that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you would take a risk to come alongside to make sure that the least and the lost and the most vulnerable are are having their needs met, their physical needs, but also their spiritual needs, their relationship needs, their emotional needs. Because if you don't stand in the gap for them and the Lord is prodding you, they'll be left in crisis. That's what a spirit-filled encourager does. We can also learn from Barnabas that a spirit-filled encourager doesn't let in the moment anxiety and frustration and fear and detachment define the rest of their story. Okay, let 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 me say this again. A spirit-filled encourager does not let the the in-the-moment anxiety, fear, frustration, and detachment define the rest of their story. Okay, In the moment, right now, in this little span of time, in the great expanse of the universe, look, it's been two months. Okay, we're in the moment. Some of us are really, man, we're ready to burst out of this confinement and get back to normal. And so it it doesn't matter. All we can do is think about right now. And, and, And so everything we see, we see that we've got to get out right now. But but a spirit filled encouragement does not 
let the in the moment feelings that they have impact the rest of their story. For example, you remember how Barnabas came along Saul? He stood in the gap for him. Well, Saul soon became known as Paul. And at some point that relationship was broken. They, they were having a different vision for ministry. And here's what happened. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with him. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in another town and had not continued with them in their work. And, and get this, they had a sharp disagreement and they parted company. This is really a big turning point in the life of the Christian church. So, so Barnabas, a spirit-filled encourager, came along Saul, who would soon be known as Paul, advocated for him, stood up for them, for him. He was people trusted Barnabas because of his transformed heart and how he saw the world and his outward actions, okay? But then it get to the point where Saul, the one whom he had advocated for, or Paul, now instead of doing this, now they were broken apart. I want you to think about all the anxiety that comes with that with broken relationships, all the fear, all the frustrations, all the detachments. This is real, y'all. We, we don't believe in the history of our faith that they were a bunch of robots. These were real people who were experiencing real emotions with, with real relationships. But what happened with this is that although his heart was broken, and although what he understood and who he had advocated for was now different, he was a spirit-filled encourager and he didn't let that define the rest of his story. In fact, the rest of the story is that Saul, Paul went off and continued ministry. Barnabas continued ministry in a different direction. And Christianity spread and people's lives were more transformed than if they would have stayed together. See, I'm praying for you to be filled with it. That your heart would be transformed. That it would change how you look at things, your outward actions, and how far people are willing to trust you. So do you want to be full of it in the right way, not the negative way? I want you to be full of it. I want you to pray for me to be full of it more and more. And so I want to pray for you right now before we celebrate communion, that, that somehow, some way, you, you really won't remember my words, but you'll remember the promise of Jesus, that he came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. And it doesn't just impact you, but it impacts how you see the world, how you act in the world, and how far people are willing to trust you. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you. We thank you for each one of these people, and we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you do transform and you do make new. And God, I pray for more spirit-filled encouragers, that you would break through our natural limits, and that we would live unlimited lives because of the sufficiency and abundance of your grace. Uh, God, lead us to be full of it. Uh, whatever we fear, Lord, would you perfect love cast that out? Whatever we feel like we have to do to be good enough, Lord, would you release us from that burden? Lord, I pray for, for every person behind the screen right now that, that while they may be thinking about what it is they want to do later in the day, Lord, that you would give them the gift of this moment to reflect on you, to yearn for you, to receive you, to accept you, and to walk so closely with you that they get covered in your dust. Lord, I thank you that what you want to happen, you enable to happen. And that every person who may hear the sound of my voice right now is precious in your sight. Lord, what you have already started through the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, would you now bring to completion for every man, woman, and child, no matter how old they are, no matter how long they've sat in a church, no matter how many sermons that they have sung, no matter how sermons they have heard, no matter how many songs that they have sung, Lord, make it so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.